Join me in Adventures in Manifesting. My name is Kristen Anderson, and we are going to talk about all of it. Hi, this is Kristen. Welcome to Adventures in Manifesting. Today, I am going to tell you a story about my birth. Not me getting born, but me giving birth because it's pretty amazing. And unlike many birth stories that I personally have heard, mine kind of goes above and beyond the things that I've heard. <clears throat> so let me, let me start by saying that this is a manifestation of pure will of mine. I wanted to have a home birth. I was, um, I had my child when I was 40. Friends and family and people who have gone before me, friends who were doctors, they all said the same thing. You need to go to the hospital. And I said, no, <laughs> I want to have a home birth. And they said, it's very risky. You shouldn't do that. You're 40 you should be in the hospital that's old to have a baby and i found a midwife group that they're not around anymore but i found a midwife group at the time who said you know what if you got pregnant naturally and that's a whole other aspect of the story which i should probably tell you um, if you got pregnant naturally then you should deliver naturally not should but could if you got pregnant naturally, you could deliver naturally. So I had gone, oh gosh, I was trying to get pregnant for about 10 years. I really wanted to have a baby and I tried everything. I was spinning sperm and doing in vitro. I was getting crazy and I just decided that it was just too much. It was too much. It was too stressful. It costs a lot of money. I'm like, this should just happen. I should be able to get pregnant. This doesn't make any sense. So what I did was I went to see an acupuncturist and I started going to acupuncture two times a week. And then after a few months of that, I changed my diet. And that's when everything changed. When I changed my diet, my period went from three days and very light to five days and very bright, fresh, and a lot of blood. That's a TMI alert. <laughs> Just too late. Anyway, yeah, if you're watching this, you don't care. So <laughs> welcome to the reality. Um, yeah, so that changed drastically. And what I did was I went through my acupuncturist and she did the tongue and pulse diagnosis and gave me a diet to balance my body based on what she found. So it was interesting because I was eating a lot of salad at that time and she said no salad, no cold vegetables, everything has to be cooked. So I stopped eating salad and I started eating, you know, um, stir fry vegetables. It was like a lot of stir fry. Um, but my body changed. I felt more energetic. I felt warmer. And the crucial part, my period changed, which I find fascinating that a change in your food could change your body like that. Well, fast forward a couple months, at, you know, I wasn't getting pregnant. I said, you know what, forget it. This isn't working. I'm just gonna travel the world and be single and work on my career and that's it. I'll be fabulous single woman <laughs> but unbeknownst to me exactly as I was saying that I was in fact pregnant so I wanted always to do a home birth because as I was going through getting pregnant and going through the process and that took 10 years I watched very many movies on um, birth there were quite a few out I would say it was like 2000, 2009, 2005, around there. There was the business of being born, 
with Ricky Lake, we love. That was an amazing movie, documentary. I think there were two of them. Um, there was Ecstatic Birth, I believe was one, or Orgasmic Birth was one. Born in America was another one. Um, there was a Canadian one and there was a European one. I don't remember their names. But, you know, they talked a lot about what happens at home and what happens in the hospital. So I wanted to have a midwife right off the bat. I knew that. So I decided to have a home birth. And then I decided to have a water birth. So I had a tub at the foot of my bed and it was filled with water. But here's the fun part. I was so adamant about having a home birth that anyone around me who didn't agree with me, I didn't speak to. I want to say that again. I wanted this so badly that anyone who was negative about it, telling me negative things about it, I didn't speak to. I didn't listen to. I didn't engage with them. I mean, ever. Not. I even remember, and I'm sorry, mom, about this, but my mom calling me and, you know, to tell me, you know, the stats of women who die in childbirth at home. And I literally would pick up the phone, hey, mom, what's up? And she'd be like, you know, I just read this article of how these women are dying. Click. I don't know how many times I hung up on my mother. It was a lot. I just couldn't hear that because my mind was playing a different story. My mind was playing a beautiful birth that I'm not even sure what it's going to look like because I've never done it before, but it sure as hell isn't going to be in the hospital and getting cut open and the stress and anxiety of that. And I protected that so fiercely that I didn't speak to my mother for about three months, I think. I you know, have to cross check with her, but it was a while. And it was, that part wasn't nice, but I couldn't handle the negativity. I needed to keep it positive. And I protected my vision. And um, that right there, the, the me protecting my vision, that is part of manifestation. I did not allow a negative thought into my mind. In fact, I went the opposite way and started filling my mind with positive thoughts. I watched every birth movie I could. Um, I listened to uh, meditations when I went to sleep about being a powerful woman and how your body is made to do this. Um, and I talked myself into it. I wrote, I journaled constantly about how amazing it was going to be and how I'm going to let go and let my body do it because I don't know how to make a baby. Do you know how to make a baby? Uh, no, but somehow our body does it. So get out of the way and let your body do what it's made to do. So I protected my vision and I got out of the way. That really is the basis um, of how this went down. So let's fast forward the pregnancy. I had a couple issues. I had sciatica, which I went to a chiropractor and he helped me, oh my gosh, in one session. I went from not being able to walk to being able to walk. It was, he was amazing. I also had the baby hadn't flipped. Um, he was breech. I didn't know that he was a he at the time. I didn't find out. So um, the baby was breech. And, you know, the midwife said, you know, there's a possibility if, you know, he, the baby's breech that we might want to go to the hospital. And I was like, hospital? We're not going to the hospital. And so I started talking to the baby. I said, baby, listen, it's you and me doing this together. Let's be a team. I need you to flip. I need you to flip. You have to flip. I started playing music 
down by my pubic bone, like way underneath so that the baby would flip to hear the music. I was playing meditations on my belly. I was talking to the baby all day long and protecting my dream, protecting my vision of how it was gonna go. And the baby flipped like three weeks before, I think it was two or three weeks before my uh, due date window, my due window. Uh, midwives don't give you a date, they give you a window because each baby is different and each woman is different and when it's ready, when the time is ready, it will happen. So we try not to force things. So fast forward, I am at home and my mother had come to be there during the birth uh, you know, window and I woke up in the morning and I had to go to the bathroom as us pregnant women do when you're like, you know, almost nine months, you're nine months pregnant and you know, it's pressure, you have to pee. So I wake up, go to the bathroom, you're peeing all day. I wake up, go to the bathroom and you know, I'm just tingling. The next thing I know, my mom is knocking on the door and she's saying, Kristen, what are you doing in there? And I said, I'm, I'm going pee. So well, you've been in there for 45 minutes. And I was like, whoa, really? I've been in here 45 minutes? And she came in, she's like, do you need help? And I was just sitting there. And then I heard her on the phone and I kind of was still sitting there on the toilet. She didn't move me. And I was very happy sitting there. Next thing I know, she's filling the bathtub and having me get in the bathtub. And I see her walking, she's talking on the phone, she's writing things down. But I was kind of, the midwives call it labor land. I was going into labor land, which I think is such a beautiful description because you're starting to check out of this world. And for me, it was going to be a very deep check out. I didn't know that then. So I get in the bathtub, I'm laying on my side, and my phone is on the edge of the bathtub. I'm just sitting on the edge of the bathtub. And as I'm laying there on my side, I'm looking at the phone and it slipped into the bathtub. And now the phone is laying on the bottom of the bathtub. And I recall this so clearly, looking at the phone, this is my iPhone, at the bottom of the bathtub and just looking at it I was so present in the moment. I didn't think, oh no, I need to pick it up. Oh no, my iPhone is gonna get ruined. I had zero thoughts on the goodness or badness of the phone being in the tub. I was only observing the phone in the tub. That's a state. That is a state. <laughs> And I never picked it up. And my mom came in, you know, I don't know how long later because I was leaving my body basically. And she looked at the phone and of course she did all the things that anybody, any, anybody, you know, present would be like, oh my God, your phone, let's get it out. And so she reached in and picked it out. And, you know, that was the beginning of it. Next thing I knew, I was being moved to the tub. And I remember looking out the window and seeing the sun over here was rising. It might have been eight, eight or nine o'clock in the morning. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe earlier, maybe seven. And then I remember just kind of closing my eyes and I could feel my body was starting to do things on its own without my help. <laughs> and I stayed out of the way. That was my mantra the whole time. So I was ready for this. I was ready to check out. And I remember seeing the sun over here and I went inside my, my body, basically. I closed my eyes and I was pulled out into a golden tunnel of light. And this is where I was. It was a wormhole. It was oppositely rotating, concentric 
like stars, multi-pointed stars. And it was also worming. It was a wormhole, a concentric circle, oppositely rotating wormhole. It's very hard to describe, but I think you're getting it. And actually, as I'm sitting here looking at the wall behind me, it was kind of this color. It was gold, um, but not this color. It's no color that I can see here on this planet. And I've looked now for nine years, and I still can't find this color. It's, it was just glowing, vibrant, golden yellow that doesn't exist on this plane. So fast forward a few hours. The next time I remember opening my eyes and I was in this wormhole and I opened my eyes and I looked out the window and the sun was way over here. It was going down behind the roof of the house. And I remember thinking, wow, how long have I been in the tunnel? And then I was back in the tunnel. I had a silent room um, for my birth. Mo most of the action was out of the room, unless the midwife had to talk to me. A couple times she reached in and you know, took a heartbeat or did some measurements, whatever they do. But mostly my room was quiet and the next thing that I really remember is, of course, being back in the tunnel and then hearing the midwife say to me, reach down and touch the head of your baby. And I was, my eyes were closed. I, I was in the tunnel and she said it again. And I opened my eyes. I was like, what is she talking about? And I was on all fours at that point and my face was pretty close to the water. And so I reached down and I felt some, it didn't really register what that was. <laughs> and I was back in the tunnel, I was out. So I'm in this tunnel of golden light and I'm traveling through it very high speed. And it's starting to open up and it's opening up to bright white light. And I'm there in the bright white light and I see these tall beings, tall, long, sort of white, fuzzy, like shaped, but like a softly shaped beings. And there were two of them standing there. And I reached out my hand and I touched the hand. It was more like a, it didn't look like our hand, um, but I touched the hand. My hand was the same as their hand. And I touched the hand, and as soon as we touched hands, I was back in my body. And I opened my eyes, and I looked around the room very vaguely. I didn't know where I was. I closed my eyes again, and I heard the midwife say, don't push. But if you're listening to this story, you know that I was just getting out of the way for my body. So... I basically didn't listen to that because my body was in control and I had a huge contraction. And the next thing I know is the midwife is saying, Kristen, pick up your baby. And now I'm in the room and I'm tell you, I was high is the only word that really describes it. I was euphoric. I did not I didn't feel like I was even in my body or in the room. And when she said, pick up your baby, I was like, listening, what? A, a baby? They're like, yeah, Kristen, pick up your baby. Pick up your baby. What is going on? What is going on? <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. And I reached down, you know, they just kept saying it, reach down and pick up your baby. Reach down and pick up your baby. So I'm listening, I'm following directions. I reach down and I pick up this baby and I'm looking at it like, what is going on here? 
I'm looking around the room and there's people standing there and I look at the baby and I was just like, oh my God, whoa. And I put this baby on my chest and I, I just, all of a sudden this flood of love came over me and that was it. <laughs> that was a wrap. I was done. I was like, whoa, that was incredible. That was incredible. I just went to the gates of life and picked up my child. I went to the gates of life and picked up the soul of my child. That's incredible. That's a birth story you don't hear very often. I've never heard anybody else have that birth story, except through the grapevine, I heard that Giselle Bunchen has that same story. And her assistant, actually, maybe. I, I don't know if it's exactly the same, but they also had this really euphoric, amazing experience. And now, many years later, I still hear women scheduling C-sections and they're perfectly healthy and they could have this incredible, spiritual, out of the body, love flood experience and they choose not to and that makes me sad and it also makes me think maybe they don't know that's an option maybe these stories need to be told more so that women know that the birth experience is meant to be euphoric it was beyond anything I've ever experienced in my life I mean just imagine traveling through a golden wormhole tunnel to the gates of life and picking up the soul of your child. Yeah. It's out there. It's pretty incredible. It's out there. It's pretty incredible. So that really is the story that I want to tell you today. And that is one manifestation that I wanted to share today about birth specifically directed towards women and the men that love them. Because if you get out of your way, if you get your ego and your fear out of the way and let your body do what is, is designed to do, your brain will dump the most amazing drugs into your system and you will leave this planet, go to the gates of life, come back euphoric and filled with love and it will be the most amazing experience of your life. Not only that, but you'll bond with your child because all of that love drug that comes into your body also goes into your child's during the birthing process. It's bonding. And that brings me to another aspect of natural childbirth, and that is connection. Once you are chemically connected in that way with your child, you're bonded. There's a, there's a big disconnect in our society today. And I can't help but thinking that hospital births and epidurals and C-sections and all the interventions that they unnecessarily do, not the necessary ones because their hospital has a place for certain things, but the unnecessary ones are removing that bond and it's showing up in our society with the fragmentation of everyone. I mean, we're so disconnected these days. And if we could just connect our babies and our mamas together again and start shifting back to that natural euphoric childbirth, then we can start to heal the connectivity that we should be having with each other. So that's just my take on it. I hope you enjoyed this story 
and there will be more to come so stay tuned i'll talk to you later thank you so much for joining me in the adventures in manifesting podcast and youtube channel and if you want to read my birth story you can go over to spiritquest.blog and read it right there all right thanks for joining don't forget to like and subscribe and leave me a comment with any topics that you want me to cover because i would love to talk about whatever you want to talk about just as if we were having a cup of tea oh shoot i had a cup of tea here the whole time look at that i'm gonna drink it mm -hmm. mm. tea time right so let me know your thoughts and i'll talk to you soon Bye.